Okay, let's get started. So let me show you the screen that I have here. There we go. Okay, so hi everybody. Um, welcome to the very first training session of um, Yushui Reiki with Souls Education. My name is Nikki Mendham. I'll be your host for this evening. Um, we had a slight hiccup with our um, transmission yesterday and it lost all the information. So I'm audience, audienceless this evening, which is a real shame, but we, um, we had a good session yesterday evening. So I did promise that I would put all of this together again for you so that you can have a look um, at what we shared last night and the work that was actually going on. So a little bit of housekeeping um, just before we get started and um, to share a little bit about the expectations of the course. Um, if you're listening to this session this evening, you will already be on my first degree Reiki course. Um, you'll have, you should have received your manuals, you should have received the video um, interlinks and various questions and things to contemplate. So you will have found all of that on the Souls Education website. So my aim for this particular type of training is just to take that learning a little bit deeper. Your manual will go into a lot of details about how to do Reiki, whereas these live sessions are more about how to be Reiki and a little bit more of an in-depth experience of it. So the aim is to um, run a question and answer session, but that will be through the Facebook community page and you all have your link for that. And also for um, the information on there to actually be, um, if, you, if you bring up the questions, then I will be in a position to be able to answer for the rest of the group. And if it's an in-depth question, I'll record it for you rather than things getting lost in translation. Um, future Zoom calls, we start at eight o'clock. I would ask you to be prompt because it means that I have to keep breaking off if I've got to let people into the session. Um, I will be locking the sessions in future at five minutes past eight. So please make sure that your Zoom link is working, that you've had a little pre-trial. If you can get on five minutes early, it's a great community chat, people get talking. Um, it's a lovely way of bonding and, and sharing some experiences before we actually get onto the training. Replays will be loaded up within 48 hours. So for people who haven't actually managed to get onto the live session, you will actually have that in your training um, section of the SOS Education website. So that will be under your Reiki students tab. Um, if we can focus on the session in hand, so when we do run Q&As at the end of these um, teaching sessions, if we could keep the focus on what we've been discussing in this particular session, you already have the opportunity of the Facebook community to raise all different types of questions as they're coming up. But if the questions that are raised on the evening could be focused on the session in hand, then that would be great. I'd also ask as well that you dedicate your time fully to these training sessions. Whilst I appreciate we all have very busy lives and some of you are at home with children running around, this is actually a time of healing for yourself. This is for your own personal development. So it's really important that you honor yourself and create that sacred space so that you can actually work with the group, with yourself, give yourself time to contemplate even after these sessions have finished. So so whilst I'm aiming for them to only be an hour, it may be that you want to give yourself an hour and a half so that you can contemplate what's being discussed, take some notes, just give you that time to settle and breathe into the learning. And also for you to take responsibility for your learning and your healing. There's only so much information that I can give to you. Um, this is a two way thing. Your learning has to be experienced by yourself. And this is what these coaching sessions are all about. So what to expect from me? As I've already mentioned, um, you have on the website a navigation tool under Reiki students. So you can click onto there. You all have your passwords to get into there. If you're listening to this um, session from YouTube, then I will actually put a comment in the um, in the section below 
just to let you know where you can find this Reiki training and how you can actually subscribe to this. So all the information will be there. But for those of you who've already subscribed and are already on the course, all of the information that you need is in your tab, in your Reiki student tab. So that includes your manuals, exercises, written work. And then towards the end of the three sessions that we'll be running, I'll also start to give you some case studies so that you can actually start to experience um, Reiki for yourself. So as I say, the schedule is Tuesdays at eight o'clock. Um, that's Greenwich Mean Time and the aim is to run them for an hour but anybody who knows me I get rather excited when I get talking about Reiki and chakras and energy work so I can quite often um, run over slightly but I will endeavour to keep it to an hour as much as I possibly can. So this is the first of the sessions and we are going to look at the introduction to Reiki, the principles and we'll touch slightly on the history, but you do have a lot of that in your manual anyway. Plus we're going to talk about how you can start preparing for your attunement. In next week's session, we'll go more into the details of the anatomy of Reiki. So this is actually looking at the, at the anatomy of the body. So the endocrine system and how that links up with the nervous system. And also the chakra system, which is part of our subtle body, hand positions and also giving treatments. So that will be mainly focused around giving treatments to yourself. So this is self Reiki. And in the final week, we'll pull together all of the learning, we'll have some final thoughts and how we can start moving forward with some case studies. So on the 21st of December, our winter solstice at 11.33 Greenwich Mean Time, we had a great conjunct. Now, this has happened a few times, but never in this extreme where both Saturn and Jupiter are at zero degrees in Aquarius. And what that means to us is an opening, an opportunity, a portal for us to expand our consciousness. And it helps us to create an atmosphere where we are bringing our dual personalities, our body and our mind into alignment so that we can be more coherent so what I mean by that is often if you can think about a situation where you found yourself saying that you're going to do something and actually thinking something completely different or thinking something and doing something completely different. So it's, it's about actually bringing the mind and the body together into wholeness, bringing you fully into alignment. And we do that by this type of work, subtly changing our conditioning, releasing that and bringing ourselves back to our true unique self and to be able to tap into our unique qualities and our unique gifts. And with that awareness, that self-awareness, our consciousness begins to expand and it brings us into a place of equality. So we no longer see things in duality, me and you. We start to see things as us. And the roles in particular around gender, race, cultural, start to lose their boundaries. They become formless and they start to balance out. And with that, we start to see social reform and the political agenda is then brought more into alignment for the whole collective and not just to benefit one particular group. Now, a lot of people as well are experiencing this as free energy in the form of lots of solar energy and lots of wind energy, which I believe is, is true. But when we start to look at ourselves in the form of energy, what we recognize is that what is in us is what is created in our outer experience. So yes, whilst we are seeing lots of new innovative um, inventions that are coming out that will give us the ability to harness the sun's energy and also wind energy and other different types of energy, I also believe as well that this is free energy that we can bring into our bodies. 
And that actually it's, this is the strengthening of Reiki that I have actually started to experience over the past 10 years. Also with the moving, we're actually starting to move out of the solar plexus energy into the heart. Now back in 1781, there was a clear split in the solar plexus energy. And we started moving away from our fear-based decisions into more of a deliberate state. So the energies around us aligned to help us do that. Now we are starting to see that split even, even stronger. So we're seeing people who are in their fear become even more fearful. There's lots of anxiety and depression around. And on the flip side, we're also seeing an increased number of people who are really understanding and experiencing that they create their own reality. And this is us now moving into this new heart energy. And I believe that Reiki has a real impact on how we experience that. So we have a choice. We can actually remain in our fear and that can be our physical fear. So lack of money, lack of housing, lack of health care. So anything to do with our physical body, we can be in fear of, but also we can be in fear of our ego dying as well. Often when we have experienced conditioning as children and then following on through religion and cultural differences, social differences, we start to build a mask. We start to create an identity that is different to our own. And this is because we learn very quickly as children to be able to manipulate a situation to get recognition. So if you think about when you've been in, in a time as a child where you realized quite quickly, quite soon on, that if you did something that was part of you, unique to you, it wasn't accepted by your parents or it wasn't accepted by your teachers or your school friends. So you learn to manipulate the way that you express that, even to the point that you no longer express that, but that is you. And this is where the ego starts to come into play. And the ego is the mask. And it has the ability to convince you that you are something that you're really not. So we can remain in our fear or we can start to become deliberate creators and we can follow our divine path. We can start tapping into our unique qualities. We can start experiencing who we are by releasing all of that conditioning, all of that pain, all of that hurt from the past, and actually standing true in ourselves, being a real advocate for ourselves to be able to then move forward and be these deliberate creators. So when we look at the phases of awakening, which is what Reiki brings you to, there are six clear paths of awakening. And the first is the victim state. So this is when we actually truly believe that we are victims of our reality and that we have no control over what is happening to us. So I just want you to take a moment just to think about when this has happened to you, when you've fallen victim, where you've made excuses for something that you're doing and you know that you shouldn't really be doing it but you continue to do it anyway I just want you to take a moment where you felt as though you were really in your victim state and you had no control over what was happening and then the second phase we start to recognize that actually there is something that we can do, but we're gonna survive it. So it's a change in mindset. You're no longer going to allow it to fully control you and, and be at its mercy, but equally you haven't found a way out yet. So you're gonna survive it. So I want you to think about this. This is kind of a bit of a martyr mentality. And we all go through this in every given situation. We are all extremes of this. We can all be in our victim and we can all go right the way up to phase six. 
And the whole point of Reiki is to, to raise us to that higher state for longer and longer periods of time. But I just want you to have a think about when you've been a martyr. And then we move into the third phase. And this is where we influence our reality through physical activity, through work and through an attitude. So this is where we bring our willpower into action and we forge our way through. And quite often this can be the place of burnout because we put aside the things that we don't want to see or hear and we keep on forging through. It's that it'll be all right mentality. It's that it is what it is. We'll carry on working at it. We'll soldier at it. It's that type of mentality. So I want you to think of a time where you forged through something, where you forced your way through a situation and what the result of that was. Now, the fourth phase is where we start coming into our heart center. So this is the time that we're moving into on a planetary level, on a global level. This is the great change that we're looking at. And this is the reason why a lot of people are finding practices such as Reiki, spiritual practices, really wanting to understand who they are, what their purpose is on this planet and what they're here to do. So, this is where a lot of questions start getting asked and this is where we kind of call call it spiritual work and it's about to get it's about getting a deeper understanding of um, who you are and with this phase we start recognizing that we create our reality through our thoughts and our feelings so this is where we start to make subtle changes so we're recognizing that Plan A didn't work because it felt wrong or you thought something was going to happen and it did and it was a negative experience. So this is where you begin to start fine tuning. And at this point, this is where you recognize that actually it's the things that make you feel good are the things to pursue. And it starts to snowball. And the more that you disregard things that don't suit you, don't feel good, cause you pain, when you start to leave that victim state, that survivor state, that work, hard work mentality, and I'm not saying packing your jobs or anything like that, it's actually recognizing that it's the state of joy, it's the state of bliss, it's the state of good well-being, good feelings that now is beginning to create your reality. So I just want you to feel around and just see if you've experienced that yet. When have you been doing a job that makes you feel really great and you've got that surge of energy to just keep going and going and going? It's like an endless supply of energy. And then when we get to phase five, this is where we really start to recognize that we are co-creating our collective reality. This is where we start using other people as mirrors and seeing that what is in me is in them and vice versa. So whenever we feel triggered by somebody's behavior, something that's been said, at this point, there's an automatic switch around and a recognition that whatever it is in that other person that you don't like, that's a deep underlying, undiscovered aspect of yourself. So we really have the ability at phase five to use people around us as wonderful karmic mirrors. And this is where we really start to unpick our unconscious con conditioning. 
and we can start really digging deep into that experience and starting to look at where that original seed was sown and this is the place where we start to reform our beliefs and reform our values based on what is truly truly important to us as individuals we're no longer part of the group we see ourselves as individuals with a role within the group we see ourselves as one cog that keeps the whole machine moving and it's at this point you start to recognize that whatever is in you impacts and has that ripple effect and it brings you to a point of awareness that actually if you want to create positive things around you then you have to create positive things within you and the fact that you are actually on this reiki course there will have been a glimmer of that just for you to enough for you to come onto this course and start thinking right okay i really want to get deep down and start unpicking and get to the core of my behaviors, release all of that conditioning and really discover who I am. So it's like peeling away the layers of an onion and it's taking one piece at a time, just bit by bit. So I just want you to take a minute just to think of when you've experienced that. Maybe you've experienced it as nature you may have seen a reflection of nature back into yourself. And then the final phase is that true place of surrender. This is true alignment to your divine purpose, your soul's purpose, your life's purpose. This is when you truly get to understand who you are and trust and serve the source energy. It's as though energy comes through your body and your body really doesn't have a choice about where it puts itself but actually there's that deep surrender and it's not scary at all. So in my own experience of this, it's finding myself being drawn to certain areas and I don't know why I'm drawn to those places, but I can literally pack up all of my belongings, leave my property and just go and head to a certain direction in order to be able to carry out whatever work it is that I need to be doing. And whether that is on behalf of the collective or whether that's on behalf of myself, it's that true deep inner knowing that this is completely right, that I completely trust in it. I am completely here to serve the bigger picture. And this is where we start to lose our identity as our self. And this is where we recognize that we are here to serve the whole collective. So have a think about when you've divinely been taken in a direction and it, and it makes no rhyme or reason. You have no idea why you're doing it, but you are in complete trust and complete awe of the process. So just before we start getting into more detail about Reiki, I always think it's important for you to know who you're working with. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit about my background. I came to healing practices in 2000. I was absolutely fascinated by energy work. And I started my journey as a reflexologist. And that was mainly because I was suffering from health conditions that had been diagnosed by six different doctors over a period of, of six years. And it resulted in more negative effects than if it had been diagnosed at the time. 
And so I ended up um, looking for an alternative because deep down in my body, I knew something was up, but the doctors kept saying that there wasn't. So this took me on to my first step of learning more about the body. And it was very much on a physical basis. But the practice that I cho chose was reflexology and also Indian head massage. I combined the two. So I started getting into um, learning about the chakras and balancing energies. So I would do a chakra balance. I was taught to do chakra balancing um, during my um, Indian head massage practice. And at the time I was really starting my journey with yoga. I was fascinated by the chakras. And so that carried me into the next phase. I started doing a lot more work with that. But then when I became a kinesiologist back in 2006, that's when it really cranked up the volume, I would say. And during my practice, I could start feeling energy coming through my hands. And it was interesting because I couldn't figure out what was actually going on, but I just knew that it was working. I knew that it was healing because there were different sensations that I would feel with different people. So depending on what work I was doing, I was getting these different sensations in my hands, not knowing that this was Reiki. So I had this natural ability to, to use this energy and it seemed to be having great effect with my clients. So I carried on and I was telling somebody that I knew about this and she said, well, it sounds to me as though you're, you're channeling Reiki. So intrigued to find out more, I started looking into it and I took a class. I did my first um, Reiki um, degree with a woman down in Cornwall where I was living at the time, Marjorie Booth. And we had a wonderful day. We had a great workshop, really thoroughly enjoyed it. And she was so enthused. She was so passionate about it that I thought, you know, there really is something about this. And then within a few weeks, I asked, you know, can I come and do the second session with you? I want to come and do the second degree. And I was thinking more along the lines of actually a professional degree, because with the second degree, you actually get to work with clients. And as I already had a practice that was up and running, I thought it would be an add-on service. And I hadn't given it too much more thought than that. Almost a case of, right, I'm, I'm channeling this anyway. I may as well have the certificate and be able to give it as a service. So that's where I was coming from with Reiki. What I didn't realize was what it was going to do for me and how much it was going to change my life around. At the time, I was in quite a disruptive relationship, um, extremely poor, had very little money, um, didn't like myself, didn't like other things that were in my life. I had a whole list of, you know, victim state qualities going on. And so with Reiki, I started um, giving myself healing each day. And this was just part of the practice. It was part of my attunement. It was the 21 day detox that I was going through. And what I realized was that this energy was building and building the more that I did this. So I carried on and I kept working with it and working with it and experiencing it. And it got to a point where I recognized all of my traits in a negative sense. And also the environment that I was creating around me was also negative. The relationship that I had was negative. Where I lived was negative. My neighbors were warring amongst themselves. They were warring with us. And, and I just thought, wow, look at what I've created. This is terrible and I need to get out of this. So I raised my self-esteem to a point that I left the relationship and I haven't looked back because it was that year that I then became a master. And that was when the big guns came out and the energy was just amazing. I can't actually quantify it, what my experiences are, but if I was to put it into words, I would say that I've now got complete faith in my process. Um, Reiki has really brought me back to myself. It's shed all of my conditioning. I feel completely guided in my work even to the point that I actually isolated myself up on Dartmoor for two years to really unpick all of my conditioning. 
in an ability to be able to raise my level of awareness, raise my consciousness to a point that I could have an even bigger effect with the work that I did with my clients. So that energy that I was talking about in the in the sixth phase was really kicking in and really you know divinely leading me initially I was in the lower phases because I was quite reticent uh, uh, being out there uh, you know if you speak to any of my friends there were tears and tantrums and my body really didn't want to be there but deep down I knew that it was something that I needed to do and it's that death of the ego I was terrified of it but I was willing to go through with that because I knew that at the end of it, there would be this ray of light and I would actually find myself, my true self. And this is energy work. The work that I do, the classes that I give is a far cry from the work that I was doing just 11 years ago. I'd already started on the journey of um, giving clients treatments, but I really became, it really became my full-time profession um, back in 2010. Prior to that, my previous life was in banking. I was a trainer and I was a regional manager for the bank. And at the time I believed I was really, really happy. I wore this wonderful mask. I had all these wonderful holidays, these beautiful people around me, great social crowd. You know, I had lots of material things. I had a lovely house in, in Devon. I had sports cars. You know, it was great. I thought I'd really hit the, hit the big times. But when you peeled that facade back, I was really unaware. And the reality was I was a complete workaholic. I was re working ridiculous hours every week. I never gave myself breaks. I hardly ate. Alcohol saw me through most evenings. I was extremely lonely. Even though I was married at the time, I was extremely lonely. And eventually I burnt out. So it was prior to, you know, prior to Reiki, when I look back at my past life, shall we say, because it does feel as though it's a rebirth, I feel sad for that person, but also I'm pleased that she found her path. I'm pleased that she woke up. And this is what I hope to bring to you because Reiki has given me the strength to really face myself, to really peel back the ego and to re-examine my core beliefs and my core values. It's changed my whole perception. I was that victim looking for others to save me. And now I can take full responsibility for myself, my body, my thoughts, my feelings. I own everything that's occurring in my life because I understand that I am the creator of it. So when we're looking at the attunements, we are looking at three different types. And this is for Yushui Reiki. I have heard of, of other Reiki practices that take you all the way up to level 20. But these are three simple steps um, that I want to quickly talk you through. Um, because while you're on the course, you will be looking at the first, first degree material. So your first degree is very much hands on. So you have to be in the same room to, to give this treatment. But it's really starting with you. I really want to focus on yourself whilst there's, you know, once you start to discover this, there's this real enthusiasm that, that runs through you to go out and help other people. But what I want you to do is really bring this back to yourself. I really want you to start working with yourself because until you can fully integrate your own learning, integrate your own qualities, your own belief systems, your own values, then whilst you can be of help to other people, this is where the burnout occurs. This is where you then become the survivor, the martyr to everybody else's cause. And this practice is really about your own self-healing. 
So I really want you to focus on this. Yes, by all means, work with your friends, work with your family, work with animals. You can do hands on if the animals are, are happy for you to place your hands on them, then go out and do that. They will move as soon as they've had enough. They will actually move. You can rake your plants. You can rake your seeds if you're putting them into the garden. There's a whole number of things that we will go over in the next couple of weeks as to what you can do. I'll be giving you plenty of ideas. But the first degree is very much about self-healing and it's a low vibration. It's a low energy. What I like to do whenever I'm working with my clients is I like to attune you to master immediately because it gives you the highest level of energy. And with Reiki one, it gives you the initial opening. It's like a little flower. It's like that petal starting to open, that bud starting to open. It's not quite fully there, but it's giving you a little snippet. It's giving you a little glimpse of what you can actually achieve with Reiki. But the reason for me um, working with people, generally when you come to one of my classes um, and doing, my, doing the master attunement is that I can give you the fullest depth of Reiki right from day one because we actually lose 80 percent of reiki practitioners at level one because it's not it's not a, a great amount of energy that comes through you will experience it you will start you it is effective it is effective um but for your biggest and truest quality of reiki then that comes through the master degree so the second degree is um, an attunement to symbols, sacred symbols, <coughs> excuse me, that will allow you to work distantly, distantly. So this allows you to work with people in all around the world. You can be um, working with somebody in, over in Australia if you're living in the UK. I generally work with my clients, especially in our current um, climate with the pandemic um, on a distance healing basis. And it's very impactful and you see results extremely quickly with distance Reiki. This is also going to bring you into the realm of relationships as well. So this is where you start to unpick and, and start recognizing how you are in relationships. Again, it takes you out of that victim state, that survivor state, and it starts to bring you to an understanding of how you interact with other people. So this is the next layer of the onion that started to be peeled away. So you start taking responsibility with this with this um, degree of looking at yourself through the eyes of somebody else. So this is your mirror effect. And then when we start getting to the master degree, this is really on a global level. This is really sending out Reiki and knowing that that ripple effect is being impacted globally right around the world. And we'll talk a lot about intent and how you can set up your intent in, in the next couple of classes. But this is very karmic energy. So it will go through your past lives and it will also go through the human past lives, the human core wounds. We as humans are wounded. We can't not be. To be human is to be wounded. So this really penetrates that core wound of the collective. This really starts to unpick the wrongs that have been done to indigenous tribes, to the genders that have suffered at the hands of another gen uh, gender. So it, it really starts to unpick all of the past not just our own past, but the collective's past as well. So that gives you an idea of the three attunements. There are four symbols that are given in these three attunements. So why am I giving this first degree for free? Well, my hope is that you will discover Reiki as a treatment first and foremost. So if you haven't had Reiki, please go out and find a practitioner or iron um, treatments that you can, you can have. There are 21 in 10 stay treatments, which you can align up with your attunement if you want to. You will go through a practice of 21 days, cleansing seven days your body, cleansing seven days your emotions, and then cleansing seven days your mental body. 
if you want, I can be involved in that and also give you Reiki for that 21 day period. You can find that on the website details of that. So I would encourage you if you haven't had Reiki to go and have a Reiki treatment. Also, my wish is that you will then go on and become a master and be an advocate for, for Reiki. And to leave this as Dr. Yushui is this type of Reiki, to, to leave his legacy and, and expand that further into future generations. This is what he wanted. He wanted this to expand. And at the moment, we've got 4 million Reiki practitioners as an estimate. And I see these numbers shooting through the roof, especially through the pandemic. So it's increasing. People are really getting involved in this energy work because they're really starting to see the value and, and the belief systems behind it. It really gives you a solid, a solid base to come back to. So whenever you're in trouble and strife, it's the place that I always come back to without fail. This session will also give you comprehensive training. So as well as your manuals, generally with, with distance learning courses, you'll get your manual, you may get a video, and that's about as far as your training ends. But what I want to do is I want to see you all the way through your training. I want to hold your hand because this is something new that you'll be experiencing. And there will be a bit of skepticism there. I was, certainly when I first started getting into Reiki, I was kind of thinking, well, I can feel this through my hands, but is it, you know, is it really me? Is it something else? And, and what I actually learned is it is me, but I'm just a channel. I am here to facilitate. The energy comes through me and you receive that because there's an agreement between you and this conscious, highly, highly conscious energy, universal energy. And that's the contract that you have with Reiki. I am simply here to make sure that I am the best possible channel that I can be. And that's why it's always important to find out who your master is, to make sure that they're constantly doing work on themselves, making sure that they're unpicking all of their, their conditioning, making sure that that ego isn't getting in the way of their work. The world needs this it really does need this and also i want to teach you about positive um prayer i often see um really heartfelt pleas on a lot of the um sites even the reiki sites where people are asking for um help for people who are ill really suffering in awful terrible situations and instantly people are um wanting to send their wishes but often it's based in lack so as a reiki practitioner i always see my clients with the ability to heal themselves my gift to them is to be able to bring reiki to them to empower them to be able to find that healing and to be able to use that. So as a Reiki practitioner, I never see somebody in lack. I always see them with the ability to find that spark of healing within themselves and to be able to draw that energy into their bodies and heal themselves. So whenever we're looking at a positive prayer, we're always making sure we're visualizing that person in their best health, their best abundance, their best life and never to feel sorry for them because there's a reason, there's a karmic agreement, there's a karmic contract for why that person is suffering at that moment in time. And there's learning for them from that suffering. So it's always, always really, really important to see that that person has this agreement and that they have the ability to take themselves out of that victim state, to take themselves out of that martyr state and to bring about their own healing into a positive state. And this is where we start looking at the indigenous teachings of if I heal myself, I heal seven generations ahead of me and I heal seven generations behind me. So this is the global, the karmic impact that I was talking about from phase um, six of the awareness and also from the master degree. 
So it's about raising our consciousness and bringing ourselves closer to ourselves. Who are we really? What talents do we bring? We are absolutely unique. There is nobody else like you on this planet. And your role is to find that person to find those qualities and to find out what your path is and how you impact this planet. You made an agreement to be here at this time. In this pandemic, what's your role? In this lifetime, what's your role? With the relationships that you have, what is your role? And it's really important to get to the bottom of that and find that out for your own evolution and for the planet's evolution. And this is how the planet is pushing us to raise our vibration. The planet is a huge ball of consciousness, far more intelligent than we are. We are just residents here. We'll be long gone and Mother Earth, Gaia, will still be here. So it's her experiment of how we interact with her as to what raises the vibration. So they're my main reasons for why I want to give this course for free so that you can actually develop it and take it out further into the world and to make that huge impact on other people. So let's take a look at why we actually suffer, where suffering occurs. Now, suffering can be a good thing. My life certainly has been full of lots of challenges. And when I was in my victim state, I would ask the question, why me? Why is this happening again? As though I had no control over it. And then one day I woke up and that why me changed. It had changed into what am I learning from this experience? And the minute that that changed in me, I could suddenly see that this was a lesson. And just like I was at school, I had to gather some information to figure out and put all of the pieces of, put pieces of the puzzle together to figure out where I needed to go next. What was my next step that I needed to take? So suffering can actually be your initiation into awakening. So let's have a look at what this actually means. So we talked about the death of the ego. And often suffering occurs when we're unwilling to examine ourselves. This is where the ego creates that mask and it is just purely a perceived state. It's not your true self. And as dual beings, we are split. We are 30% mind, our desires, our logic. This is where our strategic planning comes from. This is where our consciousness comes from. So this is where we are consciously aware of what's actually happening. It's a direct result of what's happening in our mind, what's happening in our brain. And then we have the body, which actually accounts for 70%. So this is made up of our emotions. This is made up of our muscle memory. And when I say muscle memory, we can actually carry the memory from our ancestors in our muscles. So sometimes you can find that you're reacting or playing out an emotion that isn't even yours. So this is where we start to really unpick. And this is why it's unconscious. This is why we relate the body to the unconsciousness. This is the part that works with the core collective wound. This is where it works with our ancestors. And when it's not happy, this is like a triggered child. This is like the tantrum child. This is like the brain being the mum, dragging the child along, kicking and screaming. And the whole point of Reiki is to actually bring balance to the mind and to the body and to bring it into a permanent state of consciousness. And there are actually 25 states of consciousness. And when you get to the master qualification, I'll start sharing that in a little bit more detail, but it's certainly something that you need to experience. It's not something that you can go into with your mind. And as creators, we actually create from a number of different areas within our body. So we receive inspiration in through our crown that then is formed into an idea it's conceptualized and we actually then take that idea which then provokes an emotional reaction so the emotional reaction will either like it or dislike it they're your basic you know emotions your feelings from that and out of that you can experience pleasure you can experience joy or you can experience pain such as anger or frustration or bitterness disappointment 
And then that will form where we take that next. Now, as I was saying, this is a perceived state. So quite often we find that when something hits our emotions, that is simply a chemical flood. It's a 90 second chemical flood. But if we're left with a pattern, so say for example, somebody has um, spoken to you in a certain way in the past and it always triggers you. Somebody who's been condescending. So you hear that, it goes into your mind. You see the idea in your mind of another person, the person before this one doing that to you. So actually the person that is being condescending towards you is simply the trigger. It goes much deeper, but the mind has stored that and it's recognized actually, I didn't feel good when the very first person that did that to me said what they did. So this next person is just the, is just the trigger. But what your body does is it reacts and that chemical flood that rises up within you reacts in the same way as it did with the very first person if you haven't resolved that issue. And then that's where we can start with this tantrum child where this child is triggered because it doesn't want that experience in its life. It doesn't want to be spoken to in that way. So it can then go back into that cycle of unresolved issues. This is where it goes deep into the body with the unconscious and we bury it again. We put the mask on. We don't say anything to that person who's being condescending. We also don't reflect it back to the very first time that it happened, which is actually the root cause of where this come from. We don't look at why that is triggering us. And we also don't look at what is condescending in me because for it to actually trigger in you, so for somebody to, to trigger that in you, you have to be holding that within you somewhere. So it's examining all of these different patterns, all of these belief systems, all of this unconsciousness and bringing it to the surface. And this is where Reiki really starts to bring you into alignment. It starts looking at the ideas, how you react to things and how you can avoid going into that fight, fight or flight situation. So when we don't consciously make an effort to do this and to raise our awareness and our mind and heart remain incoherent, this is where it creates turmoil and it creates dis-ease in our body. And this is where we start to experience physical pain, emotional pain. We start with anxiety and depression. We create illnesses within our body. And it's simply a trigger. It's simply our body telling us, it's simply our mind and our emotions telling us that something is out of alignment. Our, our heart and our mind, our body and our mind are not working together. And this can also be seen in a healing crisis as well. So quite often when you um, experience Reiki, sometimes you heal something in the mind, but the body hasn't quite caught up. So it's raising the awareness to what isn't catching up, what hasn't got the idea yet. So we'll talk a lot more about healing crisis as we go through the programs. But that just gives you an idea of where suffering actually comes from. It's an imbalance in our body and our mind. They're not working together. And this is the energy of the great conjunct that is bringing us together into this oneness. So when we start looking at Reiki, we are really looking at that life force energy. And it's about the spark that comes into our subtle body. It's the subtle body is the template for our physical body. So if you imagine um, a leaf, it has a subtle body all the way around it. It has a template all the way around it. And even if you were to cut the leaf, and take part of that leaf away, the subtle body remains. And this is what Reiki works on. Reiki works on the subtle body and it, it works with your creative purpose. This is your creative energy. So when we're looking at our spark, 
we're looking at that excitement that comes out of us. We're looking at that joy. So that's what I'm meaning by that creative spark. What really floats your boat, what really gets you passionate about something, intense, focused. You know, when you really can't leave something alone because you're you're so excited about doing it. This is what I'm talking about, your life force, your creative life force. And this is what Reiki is. So each time that you give yourself a Reiki treatment, you're actually calling that energy in. You're actually calling your creative energy to penetrate all of the cells within your body and to release that conditioning and to really bring you into your true essence so that you can do exactly what you're supposed to be doing and feel that passion. So I just want you to take a few minutes to think about when your body in particular has experienced joy. So I don't want you to think too much about it with your mind. I want you to maybe think of a situation, but then see how your body feels about that. What, what was experienced in your body? Did you feel joy? Did you feel excitement? So I want you to think of an experience where it's been extremely joyful, where you've used that creative energy to be really joyful. So I just want to give you a couple of minutes to think about that. that. And then now I want to th you to think about how you've experienced that creative energy coming through you in a destructive way, that self-sabotaging way, that self-defeatist way. It may be that you've sent it inwards or it may be that you've sent it outwards in a form of anger or frustration, you've snapped at somebody, you've been hostile. And now what I'd like you to do is experience in your body what the change was. So when you thought about joy, how did that feel compared to how you felt in that destructive mode? Because our body is an amazing indicator when it's positive and it's joyful, you feel light and uplifted. When it's in a negative mood and destructive, you can really feel that heaviness in your body. So I just want you to think about currently in the middle of a pandemic, how are you using your creative spark? Are you using it positively? Are you experiencing positive things? Are you going out and learning new things? Are you learning about yourself? Or are you using it destructively? Are you becoming frustrated with the situation? Are you finding yourself in your victim mode that you can't do anything, you're complaining, you're moaning? How are you using your creative spark? So now that we're starting to get a sense of how that feels in our body, I want you to start bringing it out a little bit so that you can experience this on a more subtle level. So you have that experience in your body, you know what feels good and what feels negative. 
So now what I'd like you to do is a little exercise. So we'll get, get you moving. I'm conscious that you've been sitting around for a little while. So give yourself a little wiggle, maybe move around a little bit if you want to. And I'd like you to hold your arms out in front of you. You may need to come away from your computer to do this and maybe move around a little bit, get some energy pumping. And if you put your arms out in front of you about shoulder height, if, you're, if you can actually do that, just be careful of any shoulder problems or upper back problems. If at any point this causes you any pain, please do stop. But what I'd like you to do is um, have your left hand with the palm facing down and your right hand with the palm facing up. And I'd like you to clench your fists together at the same time and then release clench and release and keep doing that and speed that up as quickly as you can and then turn them round so that the left hand now is facing upwards the right hand is facing downwards and just keep alternating them so what we're doing here is we're drawing energy down to the palm chakras and this is how we give reiki as a treatment so we're opening up these centers okay and then once your arms start to feel a little bit numb, if you bring your hands in front of you, just in front of your chest area, and start slowly bringing them together. So if you start about shoulder width and then start bringing them together in front of your heart center, and very gradually you will get to a point where there's a resistance and you feel as though you can't go much further. Now, this may take a couple of attempts for you to, to find this energy ball. So if you're finding that your hands are getting too close together, maybe slow, slow your movement down or pump your hands again, get your chakras up and running again and going. And then start to bring that ball of energy in front of you. And like I say, this may take you a few times to do this but I just want you to experience your own energy field. I want you to experience that subtle body that I've been talking about. Because this is the part that we don't see, or not many can see this. Some people can see this in the form of your aura, but for the most of us, we only see the physical body. And over the next few days, just keep having a go at that really start to energize your palm chakras and just keep doing this over and over and over until you get to that point of, of actually establishing it and finding it. And what you'll notice is that the energy will change. Some days your ball will be bigger, some days your ball will be smaller. Just start experiencing the difference. This is a very, what I want you to get out of these classes, the online classes is, is to really experience this. Your manuals will tell you how to do it. This is the experiential side. I want you to experience how this feels for you. So now that we've finished playing with our balls, what I want to look at is um, how our life force is actually drained. So in a positive sense, we are vibrant, we're lively, we you know, leap out of bed in the morning, we're excited to go and do whatever it is that the day has in store for us. But quite often when we start to drain our life force, we get to the point that we're incapable of really caring for our body. So there are a number of reasons why this happens. Um, and often it's based in the conditioning that we've we've taken on board from other people and it's our way of coping. So I'm not condemning any of this. This is, you know, it, it's to be mindful that these are crutches and they are in place for a reason. But what I would also say is this is about your level of care for your body and the respect that you have for your body. And as I was talking to you about earlier, when you are looking at what respect you have for yourself, then that will be a direct reflection of the level of respect that you have for, for others around you. So it's important to really start cleansing and caring for the body. And, you know, the odd tipple of drink every now and again or a smoke on a cigarette is, is you know, it, it's not going to harm as long as the thought behind that is this is joyful and it's a nice experience. 
if you're smoking a cigarette and thinking I shouldn't be doing this you're encoding that into your body that this is a bad thing that you're doing and this is where our illnesses start to penetrate our body it's that mindset of I shouldn't be doing this there's guilt there's shame and this is where the physical ailments start to appear this is where our, our physical problems start to appear and also emotional and mental so when we're looking at our inability to to care for our body we have excessive amounts of alcohol drugs tobacco food also stress as well we allow ourselves to be stressed um, my example, as I said earlier, was I was I was a workaholic. I thrived on stress. I worked in the banking industry. I thought it was wonderful at the time until I burnt out and I crashed. So again, this is this is another negative experience. A lot of this that I'm speaking to you about comes from my own experiences of this. So I have been there and I have drunk excessive amounts of alcohol to counterbalance the stress. I have eaten lots of food to counterbalance the stress. You know, so most of this that I'm talking to you about, I have experienced myself and I'm talking to you from the other end of the spectrum where I am experiencing the care for my body and how much that feels better in my body than when I was drinking too much, when I was stressed. Also a poor diet as well and lack of good quality water. We should be drinking a couple of litres of water a day. Our liver desperately needs water and needs to be hydrated. It sorts out 2000 chemicals every day and it never fails us. Can you imagine if one day it just said, oh, I can't be bothered? You know, it's there, it fully supports us. So it really needs to be looked after. And it likes to have, it likes to be treated well, it likes to be nourished. And one of its main sources of nourishment is, um, is good quality sugars. So that's your fructose and it's honey, it's raw honey, um, not cooked honey. Um, there are a number of different things. I mean, go do the research. There's, there's plenty out there about how you can care for your liver, but certainly good quality water is one of the things. But when the liver isn't functioning because it has got a bad diet, what it will do is it will actually take, it's our first line of defense. So when we're talking about protection, this is one of the first lines that we need to be looking at in the physical body and what the liver does is it it battles it's part of our immune system in the way that it battles um pathogens and viruses and bacteria by coating it with a protein if there isn't enough bile to destroy it so what will actually happen is by coating it it then buries it deep within the liver, deep within itself. So it may be years and years later when your liver is recovering and you're starting to give it lots of quality food and you're giving it water that it can actually then process these pathogens and it can send it through the immune system and expel it out of the body. So you may find that once you start detoxing and, and leading a healthier life, that you get quite a few colds. And this is because the liver is now releasing a bacteria that you could have been holding for years. I know when I moved to the moor and I really started focusing on my diet, I was there for two years, just purely working on my body, my mental capacity. And it's at that point that I had numerous colds and it was when I found um, this book about liver, liver recovery um, that it all made sense to me as to why I was getting these colds. And also lack of exercise. When we're not exercising, we're not exercising our base chakra. This is one of our main um, spinal pumps that we need to get fluid running through our body. It helps us with our lymphatic system as well. So it's really important to move our body. So even if you can't get out to the gym or go for a run or whatever, you will find your level of exercise that is comfortable for you. I certainly do a lot of yoga, yoga and I do a lot of walking. Um, and I always know, my body always knows when it's had that exercise. It's also a good way of releasing stress as well. 
Basic hygiene is another um, way of draining your life force. When we become um, depressed or anxious, quite often we're focused on other things and we forget our basic hygiene. And that's when we can run into problems with bacteria and infections and such like. Also lack of rest and lack of sleep. It's really important to take lots of rest breaks throughout your day, not keep on forging through. And also poor breathing as well. If we're not deep uh, breathing deeply, we're not oxygenating our lungs and we're not getting that energy flowing through our system, through our body. When you, when you take a look at your breath, quite often you can be breathing just from the upper part of your um, lungs and just the upper part of your chest is moving. To actually be efficient in your breathing, you really need to use your diaphragm. And this is where exercise can help, especially when you're working around the solar plexus area with core stability exercises, it really strengthens the um, diaphragm. But this is where you can actually take on a lot of breath and, and really deepen that breath, see how far down you can draw your breath. So as you're breathing in, your lungs should be expanding your rib your rib cage should be expanding and as you exhale everything should be coming in your diaphragm comes up your lungs contract and your rib cage contracts and that is actually the proper way of breathing most of us breathe in the opposite direction so just take a look at how you breathe next time you get a moment maybe in bed this evening just sit and put your fingers on your chest pointing inwards, touching together. And as you breathe out, see how far apart you can pull your fingers. And then do that further down onto your belly and just see how deep you can actually breathe. So the imbalance occurs in the chakras and also the subtle body template first and that's what weakens the body the mind and the spirit so this is where the addictions can occur and this is what causes um, negative behaviors and it affects the self and people around us and it causes problems with our mindset it's when we start experiencing that negative emotion attached to whatever it is that we need to really start checking the underlying motive for what we're doing and the reasons why we, you know, we are depleting our energy levels. So we'll just start taking a look at the history of Yushui Reiki. My battery is just about to run out. I apologize. I'm just going to go and get my charger. I must remember when I'm on Zoom, it eats my, um, my battery. <laughs> So the history of Yushui Reiki, um, it's believed that originally this energy was used by Buddha and Yeshua or Jesus. And to go even further back, if we're looking um, at Lemuria and also Atlantis, it's believed that this energy was used there as well. But in modern times, it was um, a Zen Buddhist monk from Tokyo called Dr. Makeo Yushui, who actually, through a childhood illness, decided that he was going to investigate self-healing. Um, he nearly died from cholera as a young boy, and this is what took him into the, the healing arts and medicines. So his desire was sparked from this childhood illness and he sought his knowledge through Sanskrit text and also the sutras. So he did a lot of um, work in the monasteries and he became a monk. And then he formed his plan of action. He realized that whilst he had this knowledge, he really needed to experience this. So it was through meditation on a mountain for 21 days fasting that he was actually given the symbols that we now work with today and also the ability to channel this Reiki energy. 
he then went on to teach other grand uh, other masters and at the point that he at the point of his death dr hayashi who was also of japanese descent um became the second grand master followed by madame takata who was born in hawaii to japanese parents she became the third grand master now the reason why it's important to know these three grand masters is because when we are calling in Reiki, we actually call all Reiki masters. We are sending out a message to all masters, past, present and future. In particular, Dr. Yushui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata to help us with the practice. And then it's at this point that we start asking um, for the intent to be set, which we will talk about in the next session. But the reason why it's really important to get the names right is because a name carries a vibration. So I want you to start learning the pronunciation of these. So it's Dr. Yashui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata. And it was the five Yashui principles that um, Dr. Yashui came up with. What he recognised was he could go into the slums and heal the people, but if he didn't give them that basis to actually help themselves then they would just go back into their victim state so he came up with five principles as a mantra for them to work with and for them to contemplate about themselves their lives their interactions with other people so it starts with just for today because it's in the recognition that we are human beings and we're not to get caught up with the fact that we are superhuman and almost Buddha like, you know, we have faults and we have to accept that. And so this is working with just for today that you will not worry. Just for today, you will not be angry. Just for today, you will be grateful for your blessings. Just for today, you will do your work honestly. Just for today, you will be kind to your neighbours and all living things. Your manual goes into a lot of detail about what these create within the psyche and also within the body when we worry, when we become angry, when we're not grateful, when we're dishonest with ourselves and other people, when we're disrespecting other people. But you can figure that out for yourself. So what I would say is over the next few days, as you start getting into this practice, I have actually put it up on the um, Reiki student page, a little mantra that I did. Um, I set it out. I've done 10 rounds of this for you so that you can start getting into the wording and then you can take that practice yourself and use that wherever you want to. You can use it in your car. You can use it while you're walking, while you're exercising, but really start getting into this because what I can tell you about my anger is something completely to dif different to how you will experience your anger. What my worry is will be completely different to your worry. So whilst there's a bit of a template for you to look at within the manual and also doing the mantra, this is your own experience. So I really want you to pick, pick out what makes you worry and that actually you have control over that worry. It is just a mindset and you don't have to be worried. You don't have to get angry. You can remove yourself from a situation. And initially it might be mind led. If you know that something is going to trigger your anger, you may strategically plan not to be in that space with that particular person that makes you angry. But then as time comes, goes on and you get more into your Reiki practice, you will actually recognize that, do you know what, that person's simply a trigger. And I've got to start looking at the, the anger within myself, where that comes from. So take time to really look at this. This will really get you out of your victim, out of your martyr state, and it will really start to raise your vibration. It will really start to unpeel that mask that I keep talking about. 
So we're coming to the end of our session. So what I wanted to talk to you about is preparing for your attunement. There's a lot of detail in the manual about how you can prepare for it, what you need to do beforehand. Um, what I would say is if you could give me 48 hours notice before you book your attunement, um, I work on Greenwich Mean Time, I'm based in the UK, so I can attune you anytime between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. GMT. Um, that can be any day of the week. I really, I don't have boundaries as in time so much, apart from when I want to be sleeping. <laughs> um, but what I would say is before you actually think about booking your attunement, really go through the manual, really see what is being asked of you before you go into this state. I want you to be creating a really sacred space for you. I really value these attunements and I would ask that you value them in the same way that I do with great respect and that is respect for yourself. So make sure that you have a really beautiful space that you can be in, maybe burn some um, oils or some essences, maybe get your joss sticks burning, candles burning, whatever brings you into a really relaxed state. If you've got excessive stress in your, in your body that you need to burn off, go and have a run in the morning, go and do a, a really intense Reiki practice, whatever you use, whatever tool you use to, to shed your stress so that you can be really open and really receptive to the energy that's going to be coming through. And also make sure that you're cleansing your body 48 hours before. So refrain from substances, alcohol, drugs, tobacco, anything like that. If you can refrain from um, eating meat, because meat does slow down your system, um, then that would be a positive way forward for your attunement. But like I say, the manual gives you lots of hints and tips. So make sure that you've certainly read that section of the manual before we start looking at um, your attunement. It's very important that you, you really get to grips and are really in the, in, a, in the right frame of mind for receiving this. And then with the Reiki master, that is where you actually receive all the symbols um, in the second degree and the master courses. So at the moment, um, as a step up to the next levels, I've actually um, given you a discount. It's on the website at the moment. So by taking part in this session, that automatically qualifies you for 50% off um, your Reiki uh, master and also second degree courses. So if you are interested in doing the full package, like I say, it is always my preference to attune you to master at the outset and your manuals then follow. And again, we will follow on from these um, three sessions with the second degree weekly training and also the master weekly training as well. So you will have that support all the way through. Um, like I say, this is it is my preference for that um, for those sessions to be done all together. So if you are interested, please let me know, and I will do all of your attunements together so we can pick an appropriate time. So your ongoing support. Um, with this course and any future courses is the Facebook community page. There's also the Souls Education page. So that's at Souls Education that you can find me. I'm also on email, but as I said earlier in the session, it would be great if you could put your questions on the community page and then I can answer them in, in detail. It may be something that we can actually, um, I can actually put together for you as a video and then we can have that as more tools and more support. You've also got the videos on there. There are 17 videos um, that accompany the manual. Plus as well, I also run chakra courses. So once you start really getting into um, Reiki or even if you've experienced chakra work or you're intrigued and interested, there are chakra courses and retreats that I also run. The next one will be starting in February. And this goes through all of the seven main chakras and it talks to you about your energies and the different positive and negative aspects of an imbalance within a chakra, how that can have an impact on your behavior and how you treat other people. So that's the chakra courses. But I also run um, personal development plans that work with your chakras. So if you have a specific challenge that you're working with, if you want something that is really tailored to your own personal circumstances, 
then I do offer weekly or fortnightly sessions as well um, where we get together on a one-to-one -one basis for an hour a week. You will also find in the top bar of the Souls Education website a free human design course. This will help you understand your energy. There's a free um, astrological chart that you work with. So it gives you a detailed look at your individual personality, your individual um, qualities that you bring. So this is where you can start getting to understand where your conditioning comes from and actually what is your energy and what is somebody else's. So that course goes into a lot of details and it helps you to avoid burnout. Again, if you want a personal reading, I do offer personal readings that will tailor it more specifically to your circumstances as well. And as I've said, there is the um, Reiki 2, the Master and plus the teacher course as well that I offer. So I hope that you've enjoyed this evening's session. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, like I say, it was as a result of a hiccup um, yesterday on our Zoom session, but we should be back up and running again next week. Um, and if you have any questions, please guide them towards the Facebook community page and I will see you next week.